Hello. And welcome to Elevator Pitch Series for the Radiographer. I am Michael, and this is the 11th video in the series on radiographic imaging. In this video, we will be looking at the process of latent and visible image formation in computed radiography. We'll be looking at the components of a computed radiography unit. We'll be looking at how latent and visible images are formed in computed radiography, and we'll be concluding by looking at some advantages and disadvantages of computed radiography. What are the components of a computed radiography unit? First off, in terms of radiation production and patient positioning, the equipment in a computed radiography unit do not differ from those in the conventional film screen radiography unit. This means that a computed radiography unit still uses the same X-ray tube, erect bucky and radiographic table, used in conventional film screen radiography. Later in this video, you'll learn how this serves as an advantage for computed radiography. Now that we've found out the similarities between a computed radiography unit and a film screen unit, let us look at some equipment you'll find only in computed radiography. These equipment are the special computed radiography cassettes, a digitizer and a computer with special operating and system software. That takes us to the process of latent or invisible image formation in computed radiography. What you have on your screen are different sizes of the type of cassettes or image receptors used in computed radiography. You would observe that they are very similar in appearance to the cassettes used in film screen radiography. In fact, these cassettes will also fit into the same bucky trays as film screen radiography cassettes. However, unlike the film screen cassettes, these computed radiography cassettes do not house removable films. The radiographer has no reason to open these cassettes between examinations, like is done in film screen to place a new film for exposure. These computed radiography cassettes contain a structure called an imaging plate. The imaging plate looks a lot like an intensifying screen and contains the photostimulable phosphor material, barium fluoroholide. By photostimulable, we mean it gets stimulated to release electrons when X-ray photons strike it. The imaging plate also has impurities of europium added to it in a process known as doping. Thirdly, an area known as a fibzentron center is present on the plate. It is these three parts of the imaging plate that are responsible for the formation of the latent and subsequently, the visible image in computed radiography. Now, how is a latent image formed in computed radiography? When X-rays strike the imaging plate, electrons are released from the barium fluoroholide because they are photostimulable. These released electrons are trapped by the fibzentron centers. The trapped electrons in multiple fibzentron centers represent the latent image. This concludes the process of latent image formation in computed radiography. Now that the fibzentron centers house the latent image, let us look at how a visible image is made out of it. After the radiographer has acquired the latent image with the special cassette, he or she takes the cassette to the digitizer, the device on your screen, for a process known as readout. The first step in visible image formation in computed radiography is the insertion of the cassette into the digitizer. From this point, everything happens within the digitizer, the process cannot be seen by the radiographer. The closest clue to tell that something is happening is the sounds made by the digitizer during the process. In the digitizer, the imaging plate within the cassette is extracted. Then, a laser light beam of wavelength 700 nanometers is scanned across the extracted imaging plate. This light beam possesses light energy, which is absorbed by the fibzentron centers as the beam is scanned across the imaging plate. Remember, during latent image formation, the fibzentron centers trapped electrons. These trapped electrons are released as the fibzentron centers absorbs the light energy. Next, the electrons that are released are absorbed by the doped europium. Now, europium has a special feature. It can undergo a process known as photostimulable luminescence, which is the release of light from a substance when stimulated. As the europium absorbs the electrons getting released from the fibzentron centers, a blue-green light is given off from europium. Next, the light released by the europium is converted to a digital signal by a device within the digitizer, called a photomultiplier tuber analog to digital converter. This digital signal is the graphical illustration on your screen currently. It represents the image that was acquired. You'll however agree with me that it cannot be appreciated in a clinical manner. It seemingly makes no sense. Thus, the digital signal is converted to a form that can be appreciated clinically. This is done by reconstruction into a grayscale image that can be appreciated on a monitor or printed out. Finally, the imaging plate is scanned with a high-intensity light to remove the latent image and allow the imaging plate to be reused for another round of image acquisition. 
This concludes the process of visible image formation in computed radiography. Now that we have looked at how images are acquired in computed radiography, let us look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of this imaging system. As you may have noticed, there is no need to replace equipment like the X-ray tube, table and bucky when an upgrade is being made from film screen to computed radiography. This is because the cassettes used in computed radiography are designed to fit into these equipment like they were film screen radiography cassettes. Secondly, computed radiography systems have an inherent ability to produce high-quality images. Also, computed radiography like most computer-based imaging methods provides options for manipulating certain features of the image after it has been acquired. This helps to reduce the number of repeats that need to be made. However, the disadvantages of computed radiography include the initial cost of acquiring the special cassettes and digitizer which are pretty expensive. The second disadvantage is a phenomenon known as the exposure creep. Computed radiography produces images of high quality and allows manipulation of images that have been acquired, even when wrong exposure factors have been selected. While this is supposed to be a good thing, in the wrong hands it is dangerous. A radiographer who is careless with selection of exposure factors and knows images can be manipulated to become acceptable, irrespective of the factors selected, is likely to use too high exposure factors on patients, exposing them to more than needed radiation. That concludes this video on computed radiography. We look forward to your questions and comments in the comments section or via email. If you love this video and would want more content, please subscribe and share with your colleagues. Until next time, do enjoy the learning process and take care.